know it's going to be crazy, which is, I think uh, we have to look at it with a, a, a fun a fun idea. Um, so I am very, very excited to have Hyde Graf present today. Ben is awesome, and these amazing people are veterans. And I just have to say, like, you are. Oh, oh I thought you were too from your thing, but anyways, thank you for your service. Like, we truly appreciate all that you've done for our country. And um, I love the way that veterans take a problem and turn it into a solution. And that's what you guys have done on higher ground. So I'd like to welcome to the stage Ben Campbell, who's going to tell you a little bit about these fabulous chairs in a little bit. You get to try them out. He's going to show you how to use them. Presentation mode. Uh, uh, it's an honor to be here. I'm really, I uh, really appreciate the opportunity. I've been coming to One Million Cups for about 2015. Uh, this is my first time being up on stage, but I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to get some feedback from this fantastic group of folks. Um, before I talk too much about higher ground, I want to tell you a little bit about, my, about myself. Um, I am an incredibly lucky husband and father. My wife's over over there cheering me on. Um, I've been in the ed tech space for about 20 years. I uh, had the opportunity to work in some great schools as an instructional designer, product manager. Uh, I've worked at a company called D2L for the last 11 years in the educational software space. Um, I got to see the company go through an IPO. I'm a VP of Solutions Engineering there. It's a, it's a lot of fun, great place to work. Um, I've been an athlete and a coach for uh, most of my life. I was a competitive rower, uh, and a rowing coach, and a yoga instructor, and a marathoner, and uh, just like a silly crossfitter. I don't know if you're doing crossfit over the next week, but you're, you're weird, just like me. Cheers. <laughs> um, I am a multi-time failed entrepreneur. Uh, my mom tells me I had some good ideas that were poorly timed, so I'm sticking with that. <laughs> and, uh, I, I really love the idea of Renaissance man, the, you know, somebody who spends a lot of time kind of looking at different things and really spending energy and, and, and focused attention on different different aspects of their lives. Uh, you can see um, uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of the coffee world, so that's uh, when my wife and I DIY our, our kitchen remodel. Uh, making a coffee bar was important to me. Um, uh, on the bottom right, you see me um, uh, playing some music. Our living room doubles as a band room. Um, but, uh, but, but none of that really connects specifically to the things we're going to talk about today, so I'm not going to get into that right now. So, in about 2002, uh, I was in my last semester of college, and I flipped over my handlebars on a bicycle, and I fractured L2, L3, and L4, my lower lumbar spine. Um, it took me a few weeks to learn how to walk again. It took me more than six months to sit down again, and you really don't know how much time you spend sitting until you can't um, it's, uh, it, it really shook me up, and, and ever since then, I've been trying to figure out how, how to find a chair that allows me to sit in all the kind of weird ways that I like to sit, to get comfortable throughout the day, and I had a real hard, hard time finding it. So we decided to, uh, to make our own. Um, and what you see here, what I'm sitting on, uh, we call it the higher ground chair. Um, it's... <coughs> It's, uh, it kind of takes a lot of different ideas and tries to, tries to melt them down into a single little product. Um, Dr. Daniel Lieberman, who's a Harvard bioanthropologist, has talked a lot about sort of refuting the idea that sitting is the new smoking. He said it's not the problem that we sit all day, it's actually how we sit. It's how we sit in this sort of deactivated physical posture. Our sort of traditional idea of ergonomics is that whatever doesn't require any musculature is the right thing. Modern science is kind of refuting that, really kind of turning it on its head a little bit. Um, in our design process, we spent a lot of time trying to make it as, as simple and elegant and sort of minimal as possible. Um, and we ended up with a, with a chair that requires no hardware to assemble. Um, it ships in a 30 by 30 by 6 inch box. Uh, it takes about a minute to put together when you take it out of the box. And, uh, and we, we think a lot of folks are going to be interested in it. 
Um, you know, we've actually seen some positive uptake, but specifically what, when we target, when we think about our targeted audience, we think about meditators. Um, the idea actually came to me while I was sitting on a meditation cushion and decided to prop myself up a little bit and uh, realized I could find this sort of Goldilocks position where it sort of felt like I was sitting on a hill, but I didn't have to work too hard. And uh, so for a meditator, it's, uh, it's a very familiar position. Basically, it's like raising a meditation cushion up the desk height and being able to do your work that way. Um, for folks who are into yoga, uh, it's, it's hip flexors, it's mobility, it's spine lengthening, it's um, using all the musculature in your lumbar and core to, to actually um, to keep yourself upright and to allow you to move throughout the day. And if you're into fitness or if you're an athlete, you could be like uh, uh, Dr. Corey Duvall, who's a former chiropractor, uh, uses one every day in his CrossFit ABL gym. He's been sitting on one for about two and a half years. He's actually seen all of our little prototype iterations, which is kind of fun. Um, I see Michael, who's a, a, also an attendee of that gym, so he's probably seen one uh, quite a few times. Um, uh, Corey's a big fan. He thinks it's, uh, it really kind of changes what we do and how we can actually use our bodies in order to sit more actively, stay more engaged throughout the day. I also see my, my mother-in-law up there, uh, Dr. Liz Friedman. Um, she, I, it took me two years to convince her to try one out. And uh, even though we used to share a house together, she finally said, well, yeah, you know, we all try it. And that was about six or eight months ago. And then around Christmas time, she said, hey, I'm, I'm getting a new art studio, and I need another chair, because I don't think I can do art on a regular chair. Figured it out, we got you. Um, from a business standpoint, uh, the share market's a big deal. There's uh, about $2 billion in annual spend in the United States on office chairs, uh, which to me really kind of uh, excites me about the fact that if we were to sell one, if one out of every thousand office chairs is sold in the United States in a year with one of ours, we'd have a $2 million annual business. Uh, so what's, what's the competition? Moment here. Uh, in a lot of ways, it's sort of traditional ergonomic science. I don't mean to refute anybody's ideas. Uh, lots of folks know way more about biomechanics than me. Um, but the more modern thinking is that using our bodies, being able to use more of our musculature, being able to move throughout the day has a lot of positive benefits. Um, and uh, the traditional chairs are, you know, well, no, we're not designed for that for that kind of posture you see up there, where if you're anything like me, you have a chair that's designed for you to lean back in and you end up sitting with your legs crossed on the front end of the chair trying to balance like you're sitting on top. That's all I've sat for 20 years. Um, on the bottom right, you actually see a company called Ikaria Design. Uh, they're out of St. Louis, Missouri. They actually make a beautiful chair called the Soul Seat. It's kind of similar concept and idea. Um, they've been around for six or eight years. I've been tracking them closely. Uh, I really love what they're doing. Uh, the difference is their, their chair is close to two grand if you're, if you're just not willing to be able to spend that, that amount. But again, kind of similar, similar idea. Uh, we've taken our lumps. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. Uh, hardware is hard. I've worked in software for almost about 20 years. I've worked in software for about 20 years. I've had to learn a lot. I've um, had to, had to humbled in a lot of different ways about how hard it is to create a physical good that you can swipe a credit card for and send off to somebody and they can actually have that physical good. There's a lot of steps along the way that we had to learn in many cases the hard way, um, but we, we made a lot of progress. Uh, we are very close to having a patent. Anybody who's an IP lawyer in the audience, we have ex parte whale status, which means we've got a couple of format changes, and then we'll have a patent. Um, Production is a, is a thing that you have to learn about. You've heard Elon say, like, designing a product is easy, manufacturing a product is hard. He's often right, and he's definitely right in that case. Um, we had to try to figure out how to scale up a solution. What we learned early on is my garage is not a scalable operation, <laughs> but we're working on it. Um, uh, one of the great things, one of the great lessons I've been, I'm able to take from this software experience is understanding how important partnership is, and finding folks who are sort of like-minded, who you can lean on for certain uh, supports. Um, in, in our case, we sent out, or I sent out a 
sent out a note to sort of five of the most prominent meditation cushion manufacturers. Uh, we got a couple of sure we'll give you some wholesale discounts. Um, and then uh, a gentleman from Dean Products, Chuck Blumenthal, uh, sent him an email. He called me on the phone 20 minutes later and said, yeah, let's do this. I, I get product ideas sent to me every week. I've been in this business for over 30 years. We've got something I'm going to be part of. So to me, that was a, that was a resounding positive affirmation. And we've had nothing but good interactions with him uh, ever since. They are actually uh, doing distribution and production of our cushions and warehousing and uh, shipping and helping us source the manufacturing as well. Um, so that's been a, a great connection. Uh, and we also know that having a cool product is a, is a business. Um, so we've thought a lot about how we can scale this up into a, into a broader operation. Um, things like being able to produce our own, our own physical goods locally is like, it would be an ideal situation. I like to take it even further and be able to actually produce the, the materials, and build, you know, create our own sustainable plywood or sustainable hardwoods, be able to, uh, to, to source those locally so that we can have sort of a purely ver vertically integrated business. We've got all kinds of fancy ideas, but it's taken us a long time to get to the point where we actually have things in place and we're able to uh, swipe a credit card and ship folks a chair. So real quickly, kind of where we are now. Uh, we've done a lot of market testing, we've done a lot of iteration over the last, let's say, three years, about. Uh, we have uh, about 25 different iterations of the chair uh, out in the wild. I'm very happy to say that everybody we've given one to, or forced one on maybe, <laughs> um, uh, it's become their daily driver. Um, everybody was, was skeptical at first, myself included, Baird for sure. I, it took me a long time to convince Baird to actually try one. Um, uh, everybody who's, who's adopted one, um, they spent a little bit of time, a week or two, to get used to it, and then now they, they're just stuck to it. So that's, that's uh, positive encouragement. Um, from a manufacturing perspective, we are producing the wood, in, uh, having wood cut in China. Uh, not ideal, but um, for those of you who have tried to produce physical goods, you know it's like not a 10 or 20 percent change in margin, it's like 90 or 95 percent change in margin, so we're, we're trying to figure out how to get better about that, but we are where we are. Um, it takes us about eight weeks from the time we, we decide we want more until we actually get more, so we have to think, think in the future a little bit. Uh, we didn't think we'd have to think too far into the future. Our, our plan was once we got all our Shopify carts and, and stores integrated and, and all that stuff, um, we figured if we sold 50 of them in six months, we would uh, we'd buy some new inventory. Officially launched on February 1st, and we sold almost, or actually a little bit more than one per day um, in, in, uh, in the past you know, few weeks. With very little advertising. Uh, the Bean Products folks sent out one mailer, and uh, we spent about 300 bucks in Facebook ads just to kind of see how that works. Um, and everything we've done from an investment standpoint is just me and, me and Bear's time and, and mine. Um, had some interest, but uh, you know, I really wanted to get to the point where we, we had something that we were. Out of them, we could put in front of those before we actually had any conversations. So, <coughs> again, I know this is a fantastic community. I've got a few questions I'd love some input on. These are just kind of things to think about, to think around, to think about. Um, you can talk about whatever you want. I'm sure you have some fantastic ideas. But uh, my questions are what if Citizen Vinyl uh, makes chairs? I don't know if anybody knows the Citizen Vinyl group around here. I think it's a fantastic business. Every time I walk in there and do that thing that you do when you're like looking at a house and you're like imagining who's going to get which bedroom, I'm kind of like, okay, that's where we do the yoga classes and that's where, you know. So that kind of model, I'm, I'm curious whether folks think that we need another one of those in Nashville. Um, how important is retail? So direct-to-consumer is kind of taking its lumps lately. There were uh, several IPOs in 2020 and 2021, and now sort of success metric seems to be, okay, if you're Warby Parker, how many stores do you have? Not just how many glasses do you sell? Um, so I'm curious what folks think about that. And, and also, I, I mentioned it kind of take, you know, you kind of need to believe it to see it or to see it to believe it, I don't know, something like that. Um, thoughts folks might have about where to put these, like how to put them in front of folks so, so you can get some exposure. Um, those are just some, some ideas to kick around. Uh, next, next slide. <coughs> and uh, if uh, 
thank you. Thank you all for being here, for being attentive. I'm sure you're going to have some fantastic questions. If anybody has any interest, uh, set up a discount code for uh, one million cups. Similar to what we do in Hatch early, so I'm wondering if you've thought about that, and if not, I'd love to uh, help you think about that. Uh, I appreciate it. Well, I think that's a fantastic idea. Um, uh, actually, the company I worked for recently went to a hoteling concept. They moved headquarters and shrunk down fewer desks. And, and, and I agree, like having the everybody having their fancy little hotel, hotel desk they can come sit at, I, I think it's a fantastic idea. Um, in, in terms of future forward, yeah, absolutely. I mean, truth is, we've got other designs. I've got a desktop design that actually sort of sits and is portable as well. Um, one of the places we've seen sort of unexpected success is actually in schools. Uh, so one of Bear's neighbors was one of the early early adopters. Uh, she's a physical therapist uh, who goes that works with special needs kids around from Boston County. She actually carries a chair with her and then uses it in her physical therapy office and has kids sit on it um, because it sort of brings the floor up to, to the height where they're sort of at eye level rather than having to crawl around on the dirty school floor. Um, I, I think there, yeah, I, I think it's a great point. I think there's a lot of opportunities, hopefully. Um, we're still trying to get, we've been trying to get over the hump of like, again, being able to swipe a credit card and have, have a chair and, uh, um, uh, and also just kind of get folks exposure. I mean, it's one of those things, so I've talked to Eric, I'd love to, we're hoping to donate one to the hash if folks are interested. Right. Yeah, we just gotta figure out where to put it. Where, where so I'm open to ideas. <laughs> yeah. It's not my office. It's just not yours. Well, I, I think that one's yours. <laughs> you, you've had nothing but good things to say, and uh, <coughs> that one's yours. <laughs> I'm definitely intrigued. I feel like I sit weird, and I have also an incredibly cheap, like goodwill office <coughs> chair. But it's also so different that I feel like. Do you do any education around it? Like I don't. Like I feel like I don't want to sit on that in front of people because I would do it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and like so, other videos. Of, you know, how do you educate the folks on like this is why you need this and how you might use it? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, we. Uh, we're, we're, we're trying to. We're kind of early days of that. One of my sort of um, kind of marketing ideas was that, that little uh, time lapse video I showed early on. Like I've done a bunch of those. Um, I think that exposes folks to kind of the idea because like seeing a video of somebody sitting is pretty awful, but like um, seeing it in a way that actually is, is moving around and, and, and clues people into that idea. Like hey, I, I kind of sit like that, and I'm not really what I'm supposed to. Um, uh, we're working on, and there's actually been a lot of, uh, you know, I, I mentioned I had some ideas before that I think were poorly timed, but in some ways I think this one's pretty well timed. Like we're starting to see a lot of signals in the market around this being kind of a change in people's area of focus and attention. Um, so if you know Diary, the CEO, uh, like one of the, uh, one of my favorite podcasts, he literally two consecutive weeks had two people, he had Dr. Daniel Lieberman, there's another gentleman from UT Austin who are uh, basically um, anthropologists studying the human body and how movement has evolved over time. And they both, like, we could literally watch the little teaser clip in the first 10 seconds, and they say, like, sitting is the most important thing for folks to be paying attention to right now. And I was like, wow, that's, thank you. <laughs> um, uh, Barry sent me last night a book that um, uh, Dr. Physical Therapy wrote, basically the whole idea of the book 
is that we have to get out of sitting in a deactivated sort of passive way um, because there's also you know all sorts of issues that erupt from it: right? inflammation, and soreness, pain, you know, weak core. There's all kinds of things that we can sort of improve upon. The the short answer is we absolutely know that's a, that's a critical piece right now, and that's really where we're focusing our energy right now is trying to get get the idea out there that we can go to different yeah, one of the ways, like the websites, mostly around what the benefits are and these videos yeah. there. And being software guys, we're so used to just creating content, you know, that goes out on Facebook, that goes out on LinkedIn, and we just start doing that. As you asked, I was like, you know, yeah, something that's more educational with the product, like this setup, tends to work better. Because people don't really get it until they start to see it put together. Sarah, thank you. Um, I'm in the room, sorry. I'm in the back. Um, so, first of all, I think it's a great idea. Somebody whose body is starting to scream, I'm getting older, getting better. Um, so, I really appreciate it. I'm wondering what that adoption timeline or kind of how long it takes to adapt, what that looks like. I'm thinking about when I get uh, a fancy new pillow that says, you know, give us 30 days before you return it. What, how long does it take, and especially when it comes to placement, if you put it somewhere where someone sits for 15 minutes and goes, ew? Uh, that's a great question. So, first off, I don't think that's the 15 minute response. Or generally speaking, it's not. Um, it's just that why is that so weird? I don't know how to, you know, like I'm, I'm, I'm just not used to that. Uh, I, I, physically, I'm not like, I'm not exercising right now. I'm like, this is, if, if from a, the best analogy I can give is like when you sit on a hill, you know you find that like spot on the hill where you're kind of your body's sort of balanced, you're sort of leaning forward, but you're also sort of keeping yourself up. Like that's the feel. Like and it is adjustable. So from a adoption timeline, I would say there's actually kind of there's sort of there's actually three different positions. There's three different tilt angles. One's totally flat. If you actually like want to just sit on a flat platform with your feet hanging over, like I use it as my piano bench. My mom's a piano teacher. She does the same thing. Do oh yeah, very cool. Um, uh, so it's adjustable into three different angles. Uh, I would say that the lowest position puts a little bit more strain on your knees. So for me, it took me a few days where I was like, oh, maybe that was a good idea. My knees are a little sore. And I, I kind of had to get a little bit more mobility into my knees. Uh, the higher position, but it's really easy on your lower back. Like it requires some musculature, but it's not like, oh, I'm doing a deadlift. Like, oh, I'm just kind of keeping myself from falling forward. Um, and then the higher positions are less less intense on the knees, more intense on the lumbar spine because your compression angle is actually a little bit tighter. Um, but uh, one of the things we're, we're focused on from a, from a business standpoint is a 100 day guarantee. So, like Casper, you know, folks have been successful doing that, saying, hey, try it for, for a while. You know, we think you're going to love it eventually, but we're you probably need something to convince you that that's true. Um, and we're, we're all in on basically 100 days, no questions asked. Because again, everybody we've given one to, even if they weren't super receptive out of the gate, uh, they do it every day all day. Yeah, I, I was kind of in that same position with my body and I had an injury. It took me six months, but I wasn't sitting on it as much either. So I wasn't at my desk all the time. I was kind of semi-retired, so I could move around a little more. But about six months would quite equate to the three months if I was full-time, 100 days to get used to it. And, and there's still challenges. I, but because I can sit in different ways, I can move around the issues that I have. So that's one of the nice things. But when I gave Baird one initially, we, we actually worked on a, one of my companies before. We, we did in grad school. Uh, I kept trying to give it to him, and finally I just said, hey, just, I'm leaving this in your house. Like, it's already set up, you might as well try it. And about six weeks later, um, he got all excited, and he said, hey, I gotta show you something. And he just dropped down into the bottom of a you know, deep squat. And he said, I haven't done this since my 20s, but I've been sitting on a chair every day. So. Here, show us, let's see. <laughs> My, my 
I have most of the same VM that I showed the picture from earlier. Um, yeah, so, um, by the way, he's a beast in the gym. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, my thought was, you kind of touched on it with um, sharing about those who are like chiropractors or physical therapists. Have you linked with a number of those types of folks in the medical profession or like, or wellness centers where there's waiting rooms per se, and say, hey, we'll, we'll place one here and um, see how, how people respond. Uh, it's, a, it's a great question. Uh, definitely something that is very near term on the, on the list of things to do. Um, we've seen, the majority of uptake we've seen have been folks in the medical field, like who are just kind of interested out of the gate. One of the most recent things we got, I did a friend out on Facebook, and I got the sweetest, like, five paragraph essay from who is a uh, physical therapist who runs a wellness center in Pittsburgh and said, you know, we've already got one on the way to him because he just said, I will put it in the front and center of my facility and uh, whatever I can do to help support. So, um, yes, absolutely, that's the right thing to be doing. We just, again, we've been like, oh, just getting over the hump of like getting to the point where we have a sellable product. But yes, that's fantastic. I also like have this like vision of setting one up in like a public place and then just putting a camera on it and have people like <laughs> walk up to it like what is this, you know? Yeah. And um, and also those who are like in health influencers, um, you know, talking about it and things like that. So there are things that are like bubbling up for me. Absolutely. So I'm like a, um, a I'm super nerd when it comes to the the fitness social media kind of stuff. Uh, I've got my list of, we actually have a spreadsheet of all the people that I want to start sending them to, but, um, and, and, and that is a near-term area of focus, 100%. Hey, man. Nice to see you on stage again. Yeah. Thank you, Mike. Hey, gentlemen. Okay. Um, early adopters. So you, you talked about yogis and PTs. Um, PTs, I don't know, you know how much exposure you can get with placement there, but um, you got a nice flat pack product. Maybe uh, finding a yoga studio where the instructor wants to use one. If they're early adopters, um, they make a great salesman for you. And uh, put a couple of flat packs in there, they make a little extra money. So, I mean, think about you know, who, who is the easiest sale going to be, and how can you place them so you can make those easy sales and have somebody else be your champion? Yeah, it's uh, again a great point. Um, <laughs> If anybody has any connections to the Astor Yoga Center, I would um, be all about it. Um, uh, that, that, is, that is absolutely our next next stage of focus, is trying to get them in, in as many places as we can, um, just, to, just to get folks over the hump. Yeah, that's a weird looking thing with no back. The, the response is like, oh, when are you going to put back on it? <laughs> 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 Hey there, my name is Graham, and uh, this is the first time I've ever asked a question. Uh, well, we're spoken to you. <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely love your idea, and it really makes me think of like, how, I will, how I will want to incorporate this into the different places that I end up sitting. Um, it, it really reminds me of the time I spent living in Asia for a few years, and being rather humble by my inability to sit properly uh, when there's not a normal uh, sort of westernized chair around. So uh, it would have been great to have used one of these before going there and being able to you know, sit normally at a, at a floor table on a cushion. Uh, I guess my question at the moment is, uh, without looking at a website yet, uh, what kind of customization options do you have for like, you know, fabrics on the cushions or, or what are your near term customization, you know, like, what are you going to be doing in that, in that space? Yeah, that's a fan, fantastic question. So, again, at this point, the only thing that's customizable is the color of the cushion. Um, we, we needed to get some inventory in place. But another great, uh, great benefit of having a partner who's been in the, in the physical goods space for 30 years is, you know, okay, we, have, we, we basically source the easiest kind of wood that's strong enough for actually to, to maintain the, you know, the, the shape of the, the product. Um, we we want to offer different 
uh, different stock in terms of the, the actual wood that it's made from. Uh, we were trying, I really wanted the first version to be uh, made out of bamboo, but we couldn't, we couldn't source bamboo that actually had the sort of tensile strength across the platform and sitting up in the higher positions. So it ended up having uh, two, two pieces for the top that had to be screwed together. I was like, nah, it's just not worth it. We'll just kind of push that further down the line. Um, where I really want to get to is either, you know, like I said, so you're sourcing our own bamboo to produce them, or uh, there's a group in Eastern Kentucky called Kempwood that actually uses uh, kind of the, the throwaway junk from, uh, from, from hemp uh, farming, and they make an incredible uh, plywood, essentially. That's like a quarter inch veneer that's made from recycled hemp and soy based adhesive, and it's actually 30% stronger than oak, uh, oak boards. So uh, that's, that's what I ultimately want to be able to provide. Um, and the, the additional customization options besides just the, uh, what kind of wood it's made out of, what color the cushions are. We've already got a couple of different variations of cushion options. So this is, this is um, uh, organic canvas. Uh, the bean products folks also have an organic hemp fabric that they use uh, for, for stuffing. We have different types of stuffing. So this one is, the one I'm sitting on right now is kind of the newest version. It's got the firmest top. That one of the, this is actually an organic latex top on the inside of the cushion. Um, that one's a little bit more kind of traditional cotton batting. It's an older, older version. Um, but we have a bunch of different customization options that are, again, like once we get folks in, you know, the sort of version one in front of folks, those are going to be absolutely kind of later in this year. Very simple. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Great presentation. Uh, I've been coming into this for several months. I haven't seen anyone bring a product, actually. So just the fact that you're there, you're sitting on it is, uh, I mean, all, that's awesome. And as you met, as kind of been mentioned, like seeing it in use, obviously, is very useful and helpful. Um, so I guess the, uh, just an idea for you in terms of placement, obviously you got like the spas and chiropractors and that. Um, and you did mention music, but I see like uh, just an idea for you, an event, you know, where you have uh, maybe a band, someone sitting playing guitar, someone at a piano, your music, both of those are up yeah. on stage, you know, I feel like that would be a pretty cool way of putting it in front of people in a different way. I love that idea. Um, another thing we, we've thought about is things like uh, center, uh, retreat centers and things like that, where they're actually doing a lot of seated meditation sessions. A lot of folks have trouble getting up and down from the floor, but you can usually get up and down from a chair, especially if you get into the same sort of posture, you can be a beneficial thing. So those kinds of those kinds of environments we think are gonna be interesting opportunities. I mean like everybody sits and like everybody sits all the time in all sorts of different ways. So there's, 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 there's a lot of different directions we can go. Those, those are some great suggestions. Uh, the music thing is surprisingly effective. If you ever play guitar, like not having chair arms in your way to like sit down with a guitar, like it is, it's a good, it's a good spot to be in. <laughs> Hi, Jackie here. Um, okay, so marketing-wise, I definitely think that the boosters would do great throughout. People are just like that kind of wellness and, and love to show what they're using. And then, um, you know, going on a science-based podcast, I think people are really Wanna, you know, it's the Andrew Huberman listeners, um, and you might even, you know, that might lead to you seeing one that is like a regular. You sponsor them because they, their listeners are so closely tied with your ideal audience. Um, so just some thoughts as we things in that world. And then the other thing is not urgent, but doing more exploratory research with different populations, different body sizes, different needs, abilities. Because just as someone who's short, I'm looking. It's not thinking, oh, I don't think my pelvis can be neutral and my feet on the ground, and that's a need that I would have. So how do different bodies have different needs? Um, again, you know, just get what you got out there, but down the line. Thank you. That was a great idea. Yeah, the, the influencer angle is, is absolutely right. I, I, I was listening to Rick Rubin when I was, when I sort of came up with the idea, and I was like, wow, I bet Rick Rubin would like to sit on so I, one of the things we want to do uh, is um, uh, I want to record little videos. And you're a marketer, and you can tell me where this is a dumb idea. I want to record little videos that I can send to the people that go and say, "Hey, Rick Rubin, like." 
like you're sitting cross-legged all the time. Wouldn't it be cool if you could sit at your recording console without having to, uh, to you know, compromise your preferred position? Um, I'm gonna sound like Lex Friedman, just because he's like my favorite person in the world. Like, um, you know, I, I agree. I think there's, I think there's a lot of, a lot of opportunities. Um, and, and, and it's a great, it's a great point around the different sort of body styles. And, and we have intentionally given them to people in different sizes and shapes. Um, I actually don't hardly ever put my feet on the ground. I mean, you can. I only do it when I'm playing piano because I need to use the pedals. But, um, but I generally don't ever sit with my feet on the ground. It's another kind of weird benefit. It's like, I, I'm usually, I, I didn't want to take off my shoes so I didn't want to make anybody uncomfortable, but um, <laughs> generally sit without shoes, uh, which is kind of nice. I actually prefer it that way. Um, but, but yeah, it's a great point around uh, different, different shapes and sizes. We actually have different, uh, we have designs for you know, slightly smaller, slightly larger versions of this to sort of accommodate some of that stuff. Um, but yeah, it's a great point. For the, sh for the shortness and sitting on one of those different types of body. So it's still 20 inches, which is exactly the same as a regular office chair. And actually, I like sitting that way because it puts a little pressure on the back of my thighs and it kind of feels good. So it's like a little, little massage. So you can still sit the same way if that's one of your preferred ways. What are there like seven different ways we identified? Uh, there's lots of There's actually. Uh, uh, in, um, in neuropathy, there's this idea of uh, archetypal postures, which sort of emanate from uh, embryology. Like the physical shape your body takes during gestation is kind of naturally how you're inclined to sit. And that's basically like this, or like this, or, you know, there's, there's sort of seven archetypal positions, and you can get into five of them on, on this chair. This is another one of them. Um, that are actually kind of how your body, not just evolved, but like grew in the womb. Um, so, yeah, there's there's a lot of different weird ways you can sit. I sit all kinds of weird, I mean, I sit like kind of side saddle sometimes. I, sit, I literally sit on Zoom calls all day long with my knees up. People don't understand where I'm sitting. I'm like, <laughs> Kids' beds, you know, like kids' bed cars. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I, 
think it's a fantastic idea. And I also think like there's a lot of places that part of their ethos is to, to have different stuff. You know, like my company is across the street from the Canadian Google headquarters, and they've got a, a swirly slide that goes from the third floor to the first floor. So like, you know, I, I think some folks are could be could be into it. But it's a great idea. Thank you. Chad. First time here. First time. Here. <laughs> Not necessarily advice or a tip or anything, but uh, I'm curious how fast you could scale it if you got hundred thousand or a million, like PO kind of thing. Yeah, because I'm so I'm, I've got four kids and they're immediate adopters, like they all sit like that, and I want them for my dining room. I want them for the outdoor. Like, yeah. it, it feels like it replaces a lot of things and kind of reminds me of like a cold shower. Uh, it took a couple days, but it, it's good. I can tell you. Know what I mean? I mean cold it's, shower, yeah, I'll take it. It's a perfect product. I was just curious how fast. If you sent one to Joe Rogan and then he did one day. <laughs> My wife keeps telling me it's someone to do it. Um, <laughs> uh, we, we could. I mean, uh, I don't know how. So here, it, it's it's complicated. Right. So so the the interesting thing is it's it's shockingly simple. Yeah. Like it's literally a four by eight sheet of plywood that we cut into a shape, and then it's finished with you know with with the, you know like uh, just smoothed out and. and Sanded and all that stuff, but like, and the, the cushions the, the company already makes 100,000 cushions a year that they sell. So um, it's, it's possible to scale, and it's also like the thing we really struggled with, honestly. Like, I did not want to send more money to China or send more ships across the ocean, whatever. You know, like, nobody wants to do that. Um, and we just couldn't find anybody locally that could do them at a, at a price point that would actually lead us to having a real business because we couldn't get to a scale where they're like, oh, well, it's worth it to actually have a, a dedicated person who's, who's you know, putting these on the CNC. Um, but a shout out to, to Jason at Nashville CNC who helped us with all the prototyping and all the like, kind of iterations along the way. If you're ever looking for something like that, Nashville CNC was awesome. Um, but, but we couldn't find anybody locally who wanted, like, who, who, we couldn't tell if folks just didn't like the idea or they just didn't like the scale. Um, but we'd love to be able to do them at, at scale. But right now, we know how much it would cost exactly at different price points and different uh, inventory numbers. We know how many we can fit in the shipping container. We know how much volume they take up in, in terms of warehousing. But we, we know all the stuff. Um, but if, yeah, if Joe, Joe Rogan had one, we'd be in trouble from, a, you know, basically it would take us eight to 10 weeks from the time we had the, you know, we thought there was going to be volume to the point where we'd actually have these. Yeah. Right now, our manufacturer can do a, a thousand and get them to us in 60 to 75 days. But I don't know. We haven't added more zeros onto that. So it's, and there's a little opaqueness exactly with how they do things in China. Mm -hmm. cool. Thank you. Yeah, and there's all kinds of bumps along the way. I mean, our first first run of inventory got stuck in customs in Vancouver for six weeks or whatever. So, like, the other thing, but again, the benefit is anybody who has the machine that it would take to do these. It's a it's a four step CNC machine, which basically has different different tools that can interchange. Um, if you had a forty thousand dollar piece of gear, like you could as fast as you could put the plywood on, you could print new ones. Um, so it's scalable in that sense. Like it was very intentional to eliminate all the other variables that we could. So there's no screws, there's no adhesive, there's no, oh, this one got shipped and kind of got broken. Like it ships as a, a big block that's six inches thick, and then in a minute you've got a chair that you sit on. Appreciate the encouragement. We'd love to have that problem, but we don't have it <laughs> It's coming. All right, we have time for one more question. Hi there, my name is Sarah. I'm actually taking a point from Josh. This is my first time contributing to the conversation on this level. So, thank you. Thank you. 
But I just had an idea expanding on the partnership and kind of retail space opportunities to explore. I'm thinking of companies such as uh, a couple of friends' companies that come to mind for me, Yoga Vated and Yoga Democracy, and they specialize in artwork on yoga clothes. So they're partnering with you know artists, putting putting the pieces of art on the clothing, but those cushions could be another space where they could put that artwork, and since they already sell yoga type product, their website would be a good foundation for that. And I'm sure there's there's others specifically, but I would also be happy to make that connection. I know that they would be very excited about a product like this. That was a brilliant idea, we'd love to. Uh, one of my original ideas was, because we have you know, such an art scene in Nashville, the original designs were, were more boxy, they were, they were filled in, and I wanted to basically sell panels to artists to be able to like put their stuff in front of people. Um, but but hadn't even thought about the fabric. That's a, that's a fantastic idea too. And any connection you can get us to, to yoga folks, I'm, I'm, I'm here for it. Absolutely. All right, let's get hired. <laughs>